Today is one of those days where I absolutely love my job. We're our nation's capital. Why are we here? We're here to interview the owner of the 1968 Ford Mustang number 559, the hero car from the movie Bullet. We're here with Sean Kiernan. Sean, dude, thank you yes, for seeing us. Sir. He is the owner of the most iconic Mustang in history. Now, tell us a little about the car. I mean, the car obviously sort of disappeared for a long time. Yep. Uh, it was in your family, I take it? Yeah, dad bought it uh, in 74. He's the third owner. Uh, first owner was an editor on the lot. Uh, second owner uh, was actually a detective named Frank. So that's how it made it from California to New Jersey. And then, uh, yeah, uh, October 74, it was in a road and track ad. So my dad uh, went over, he, it seemed like he was the only guy, talking to the second owner, he was the only guy that actually called, showed up, took it for a test drive, and then that was it. And uh, between 74 and 80, uh, my mom and dad put 46,000 miles. I was gonna say, I heard it was a daily driver. Daily one, driver. And nobody even really knew what it was. It was just another exactly, 68 yeah. fastback. Exactly, yeah, in the 70s, I mean, you know, uh, movie cars weren't really a thing. True, um, true. But uh, yeah, and you know, to know my father, I mean, he never had a problem daily driving it. And that's what I love being able to tell everybody because I think a lot of people before I revealed were like, oh, this guy's just hoarding it. It's sitting there. They're not putting any miles on it. And to say that, you know, mom and dad put 46,000 miles on it, it's pretty awesome. Which is great. I mean, yeah. that was the fact that it was driven it's that far. It survived yeah. like that. that nothing exactly. Nothing major really ever happened to it. The car kind of went away for a while. It sort of went into almost into hiding. Right. What was it like for you growing up knowing what the car was and not letting anybody know that you had it? It was, uh, it was interesting because, you know, my dad was into horses and cars. I picked up the love, you know, for everything automobile. So when I found out about the car, we had it at the house. It was probably 80, 89, like seven, eight years okay. old. Okay. And, you know, not until the 90s when the internet was born uh, that things kind of got weird. And okay. I kind of had to keep it from everybody, and, and dad did too. Um, it was it was bittersweet, you know. It was amazing to have the car, but it was kind of having a celebrity in the family. You couldn't tell anybody. I was say was it hard not telling friends that hey, check it, out this car we have in the garage. It was, and you know I'm a you know diehard Mustang guy, so not being able to talk to anybody about Mustangs or anything because you have the Mustang, <laughs> right? And I couldn't have an 01 Bullet because that sparks conversation. Couldn't have an 08 right. Bullet that sparks conversation. So all my friends are Camaro guys. You know, uh, it was kind of like a sleight of hand always. You know, at the house, we, Dad always had a couple of cool cars. This one stayed under the cover, and if we had somebody coming over, we just kind of, you know, point them in that direction and never show off this one. Now, what made you finally decide to bring this car back out into the Mustang world? Now, let enthusiasts see it after all these years. What was, was there a catalyst that was oh. involved in this, or what actually made you make that decision? Yeah, uh, it's a it's an interesting story. Um, so my father and I took the car apart starting in 01. And like all of us, we have that restoration we're getting to, back burner car, you know. We've done it a year and 10 years later. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, you know, we had taken the car apart and in 14, my father had passed away. Um, we have a, you know, I have a farm. I knew, I knew how to take care of the farm. I knew how to take care of my mother. This, however, scared me to death because I, I had built cars, restored cars, and you know, had a lot of fun with them, but I've never built one that the world was gonna see. Okay. So that was that was very, you know, I was nervous. I wanted to do it right. I wanted to, you know, come out in the right light, but I was, totally didn't know how to do it. And okay. so through, you know, we, uh, my wife and I got married, and then the week after, I'm riding with my boss, um, coming back from a sales call late at night, and uh, you know, he, he's just making small talk. He has no idea, you know, he, he knows I'm a car guy. He has, n he knows nothing about cars uh, at all. He's a total sports guy. He could barely tell me how many wheels are on his car. <laughs> and uh, he asked me, you know, he's just making small talk, what kind of cars did your dad have? And I always say, you know, we had a 75 911 restoration project. We had a 68 390 GT Fastback. And I always told that to everybody because, you know, I always like to be able to just say- Just said you had it. a 68 right. Fastback. They don't need to know yeah. what 68 Fastback. Right, and he goes, <laughs> What color is it? And I said, uh, it's green. Um, he goes, oh, that sounds like bullet. And I said, uh, huh? Because <laughs> imagine a non-car guy asking you about that. True, true. And uh, that's the thing with that car, I mean, it, movie fans love it. The, I mean, a lot of police love it because of the movie it was. Based oh, exactly. On. It doesn't exactly. have to be a Mustang guy to appreciate what this car actually is. Exactly. And uh, come to find out, him and his friend. Uh, wrote a screenplay about five years prior about two kids finding Steve McQueen's long-lost Mustang. 
the guy started off in New Jersey, went to Kentucky. He starts telling me all this stuff about me in okay. the car. And I'm just kind of freaking out, not knowing what's what. And, uh, you know, after he rambles on a little bit about my life, I turn to him and say, that car that you're talking about, <laughs> that's my car. my car. And then he looked back over and I just had tears coming down. He knew at that point that it was real. So I met the director, the guy that actually wrote the screenplay uh, the following day. And uh, we're all best friends, brothers even now. Um, and Ken, the guy that wrote the screenplay, was the first guy outside my family to see the car. Okay. The car was completely taken apart. Um, at that point, the only thing that was left was the doors, the dash, and the glass. And oh, wow. uh, okay. he came and saw it and geeked out and <laughs> pretty much inspired me. As any me. enthusiast would. Yeah, yeah. It inspired me to put it back together. Um, so April 16, uh, that's what I did. I thrashed on it, got it back together, fired it up for the first time on July 4th with mom and uh, my wife, Sam. Mom held the camera, Sam held a fire extinguisher. I fired it up <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, and that's actually when I put the plates on the car for the first time, the, the bullet plates. Okay. Um, Cause those hung on my wall my whole life. And uh, yeah, that was the, that was the moment I knew I, you know, not only could honor my father, the car looked amazing. I felt good about it. And then that's when we all collectively got with Ford. I got with Haggerty and then the historic vehicle association, which is why I'm here today. Okay. The 50th anniversary was the perfect Probably about star. the perfect oh. time with the new bullet coming out. Exactly. Yeah, it would be absolutely amazing. Yeah, so when I got with Ford uh, in 16, we, we had this amazing meeting and they're like, yes, we're going to do a, a 50th anniversary. We're going to honor your father. And I came out of that meeting. I was just, it was just amazing. Wow, what an amazing story. Yeah, it was awesome. Now, is it true? You brought up Steve McQueen at one point. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe I did read somewhere that he tried to buy the car back a couple yeah. times. Tell us about that. Yeah, so December uh, 77, he reached out to my father a couple of different times uh, trying to buy the car back. And, you know, like all of us Mustang guys, which my dad was, if you had a Mustang for three years that was a 68 Fastback that had some, you know, heritage to yeah. it, built by Max Bilchowski, you probably wouldn't want to let it go. So when McQueen reached out to him and said, hey, you know, I'll replace it, as long as it's not too much money, with something kind of like it, and, uh, but you know, if not, we just better forget it. And Dad pretty much said, oh, okay, we'll forget well, it. Forget it. <laughs> you know, because at that point, his family car, I mean, it was his. I yeah, mean, it exactly. was part of the family. It was almost so. more his than McQueen's at that point. He exactly. Had it, he had it that long. Exactly, and, and that's why Dad just said no. And you know, to know my father, he never had problems saying no to anybody, you know. But, uh, probably why it, I kept the car a secret so long. Exactly. And, uh, you know, what's, what's sad about that is three years later, McQueen passed away. But if he had gotten the car, God knows where it would be today. Exactly. So, At an uh, auction block somewhere, I'm sure. Right. And I'm just happy that, you know, it, it did work out the way it was. It, it did. And the funny, you know, stars aligning thing with that is 40 years later, on the day, I met Molly McQueen, who's Steve's okay. grandfather. Sure, sure, okay. And that was the first day I met her. We, no intention whatsoever. It just happened to be December 14th. Wow. Yeah. So Sean, we're just talking about the license plate mm -hmm. on the car. I, I asked you the question, have you ever watched, you know, everyone expected to have the movie played on there. Right. What's the story with the license plate? Yeah, so in uh, 1979, my mom, for my uh, mom and dad's 10 year uh, wedding anniversary, goes down to the DMV and to hear her tell it, the simplest thing ever, but she goes down there and says, this is what I would like to do. They said, you have to pick six letters. Of course, the movies have got more than that. And uh, so instead of two L's, she went with two T's. My dad's middle name is Emmett with two T's. So okay. that's why she went that way. Gave them to my dad. My dad never wanted to put them on the car just to kind of, you know, he didn't want to draw attention to it. <clears throat> um, and those, the, there was actually, there's a front one as well, hung on my wall my whole life. Um, and the first day that I fired the car up, July 4th, uh, I put them on the car. And <clears throat> to so be able that to do that. for how many years before it actually went on the car? 36 years. Wow. Yeah. 36 years before I actually put it on the car. Amazing. And that day was awesome because that was the first time I fired it up. That was too. what became that was bullet it. again. That was bullet. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yep. All right, so Sean, we had some people, we reached out to some people in the industry as well as some customers and they had some questions for you too. So some of these were kind of off the wall, but I'll give you some of the better ones those. here. Those are my favorite. Uh, we had Jaron Cole from the Mustang Owners Museum asked, what was it like the moment right before you were about to drive the bullet on stage in Detroit? <laughs> yeah. What were you going through? What, were, what was going through your mind? What were you thinking when that happened? Uh, that's an awesome question. So I was actually hidden under the camera stage in the back. Uh, I had to get in there an hour and a half before I actually pulled out. Um, so I had to Dukes of Hazard it into the car. Um, it's funny, you know, I, I was in there texting. Uh, Samantha was in the audience. My mom was at the house on the couch uh, taking care of the horses and everything. I was texting with Sam. Uh, my good friend Steven texting him uh, 
And honestly, I had to stop about 15 minutes before because I mean, I started getting emotional. Mom Imagine, was texting me going like, say. you know, she was just pulling it out, you know, going, hey, you know, your dad would be so proud and, and saying everything. So I was like, okay, I love you, bye. And I had to put it down. Otherwise, I'd be pulling out with snot rolling down, the, you know. <laughs> I had rehearsed probably, I guess, about 16 or 17 times. Now, when you came out, was it announced that this was the car? Oh, yeah. Okay, so a, they knew it was coming. Yeah, they did the Molly video. Okay, um, I remember the Molly video. Yeah, so they actually, uh, Molly had said, you know, Steve, if you're looking down, we've got something for you, you'll, you know, you'll really enjoy. And, I'm, of course, I'm like, you know, starting to get. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and uh, so the video plays, and then right at the end, I asked her to start the car. Uh, and then she fires it up. That plays over the loudspeakers, and I actually, at the exact time, fire the car up under okay, the stage. Okay. Okay. And then everybody, you can see, is like really kind of confused. Hear it, but you like, hear it? Is that really? And then when I pull out, it was the first time through all the rehearsals and everything. It was just like a standing. Everybody stood up. Wow. So amazing. It was a butterflies, sweat, going, just nervousness kind of moment that was over very fast, but. The most gratifying thing I think I've ever done in my life. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Michael Johnson from Muscle Mustangs and Fast Forwards wants to know, now the car is in the public spotlight, what's next for the car? Museum tour. Uh, you know, I think that my goal is to show it to as many people that it was hid from its okay. whole life. Uh, you know, I want to make sure that it hit all the, the proper spots. Um, trying to kind of focus uh, the first part of the year East Coast. Um, then hopefully go overseas and then come back and do West Coast. Okay. Um, and then towards the end of the year, we'll be announcing, I'm going to do like a 90 day, 90 per museum, uh, 90 day per museum kind of tour. Okay. Uh, and then just hit all the majors um, and then definitely come back to uh, Henry Ford, which is pretty near and dear to my heart, the Henry Ford Museum uh, in Dearborn. Um, but I would say eventually, maybe a couple years down the road, she'll come back to the house. That's, now, is the plan to ever fix it up, or you just kind of leave as much patina as you can? Exactly. My goal now is to kind of freeze it in time okay, and preserve excellent. it. That's yeah, that's going to be my... Great to see. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we can all restore and, and you know, make one shine. only once. Exactly. Yeah. And that's my goal is to... I mean, this is the way she looked my whole life, and that's the way I want to you know, her to look forever. So. Great, great. This is one of my favorite questions. Steve Turner from Power Auto Media asks, have you ever or would you ever take the car through the actual route of the movie chase scene? Yes, I would. I am wanting to. I hope that happens this year and I will be going probably a tenth of the speed. As long as you go, that yeah, will as there long be a charger involved? I, yeah, a charger, probably not the charger, but yeah, I'm sure. We'll all, yeah, they'll definitely make sure there's something there I'm chasing that or getting chased by. Heck yeah. I nope. won't go, yeah, I can tell you. No jumps. It'll be very hard not to. <laughs> I mean, that's gonna be, you know, some willpower going on, not mm. to, you know, just hammer it. But uh, yeah, I would say I'll, I'll put around the route. Now, one, one reached out to us and said, okay, you have the bullet. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other bullets or any plans to add any more bullets to the collection? Maybe I do. Maybe a 2019. I do, yeah. So uh, I have ordered a 19, um, hopefully uh, July-ish. Uh, okay. So this will be number one for me, and that one will be number two. Um, Complete the collection with an 01 or 08 somewhere yes. down the road, maybe? Yeah. I've always wanted them. I've always wanted to have them. The problem was that I couldn't, because imagine me at a car show with an 01 bullet, and somebody asking me to tell the story about the, my 01 bullet. And it's extremely hard, because the whole time I feel like I'm lying to them. True. So true. I had an 08 Black GT, you know, back in the day I had an 03 Cobra, you know, it just gone through all the body so styles. What's great is you are a Mustang guy too. Oh, right? yeah. As soon as we started talking, it's like you're an enthusiast too, which and is great. And that's finally being able to tell somebody that, yeah. It must gratifying. have been hard to oh keep my. it that quiet for impossible. that long. I can't impossible. even imagine. But yeah, no, I, I definitely, I have uh, bullets in my future for sure. Okay, next question we've had is, how many offers have you received from somebody who wants to buy the car? That's uh, a... <laughs> know you met Jay Leno, we know how he is with his collection. Yeah, and actually he was more of an advisor, uh, just on, you know, who and when and how. Um, but actually, official offers probably three or four. Um, I'm working with a, I wouldn't say like, kind of a guy just, you know, to take official offers. Yeah. No one's really had the nerve yet to walk up and actually offer me money. But uh, yeah, through, you know, indirect lines, uh, three or four offers. Will the car ever leave your family? Um, that's a good question. Uh, you know, there's a defining line that you know, it makes sense for the future of my family um, if if it's right. You know, I, I would imagine with as much as 
as the stars have kind of aligned and, and these moments in time have happened, I would imagine if it was to leave the family, uh, I'd be well aware. It would be the moment dad going, okay, now's the time. The, or, you right, know. the right circumstance. Exactly, right. yeah. And, I, you know, I'm obviously pretty strategic with certain things with this car and how things happen. Um, hopefully, you know, we are working on the movie and the screenplay. If that all is to work out between Casey, Ken, and myself, um, then I, it'll never leave the family. I could end up right here in the Smithsonian, too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then the last question, mm -hmm. do you let your wife drive it? <laughs> That's awesome. Who's standing right there? Yeah. Uh, not yet. Um, we just hadn't had the perfect opportunity yet. But uh, I have uh, definitely this year, um, my mom will get back behind the wheel and my wife will drive it. I'll make sure that happens. Excellent. The last question I had for me was, do you ever see a time where maybe once this dies down a little bit, mm -hmm. where you would just hop in 559 and just go for a drive? Yes, without a doubt. I actually have the road in my mind. It's Excellent. just right now I can't do it just because of, you know, I'm not even near it, uh, it. near the road. Uh, but yeah, I, oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't see myself driving up to a Cars and Coffee like I love to do. <laughs> Oh but God. I definitely uh, have a back road in my head that I'm going to go down that right. my dad and I used to, uh, so for sure. Awesome. Well, Sean, yeah. thank you very definitely. much. It's thank been an you. honor to meet you, and thank you for bringing the car out. Yes, sir. Thank you.